Well, we're over at uh, a friend's house in a 55 plus community um, that is so graciously letting us stay. And Yangmo isn't able to um, go in the stairs anymore. And he's had, you know, a couple episodes really over the last like three years where I really thought it was like the end, you know? So we're hanging out over here, but he hasn't eaten. For like two days probably and um, he'll drink a little bit of water usually like a bunch at once oh I think he's gonna vomit again here Mickey. here here Mickey. you gonna go outside Anyway, um, he keeps vomiting. It was like, you know, just every couple days or whatever. And now it's, uh, hold on. Hey, Bart, you see over here. And now it's like three times a day. And uh, because he's not eating, like nothing's coming up. Um, so, but here there's a, uh, um, there's no stairs or anything and uh, a bunch of air conditioning because the RV is just is too hot right now. So we're hoping that um, uh, that he you know either gets better or I don't know I mean he's 14 and a half so uh, you know this might be it and I know some dogs uh, they stop eating and drinking. I mean, he won't even eat like his favorite snacks or, uh, you know, sausage that I would put his medicine in. Um, much less he hasn't had his medicine for like three days. Um, and uh, he doesn't really want to pick his head up, you know, and when he's standing up, he'll kind of just stand and he won't sit down. And so anyway, um, He's not doing well, and uh, I'm really thankful to have this place to stay right now. And uh, the plan was to be driving up to Oregon in just a few days. Uh, that might need to get canceled or, or pushed back. Um, so anyway. that's how it's going and I've just been kinda looking at you know a bunch of photos and stuff because a friend of mine said you know always make sure you take a lot of photos <laughs> and video and so just out of curiosity I thought how would it feel to look at those photos right now and I just see that He's been with me, like, my entire adult life. I really only know having him, you know. Um, he's lived in, in Germany with me. <laughs> he's uh, visited other parts of Europe with me while we were living there. He's been to Canada on a couple visits. Uh, all around the... Uh, all up and down the east, west coast. Um, he's been out to Texas and Yellowstone and um, uh, he's just a really big part of my life. Well it's probably been <clears throat> two or three days since the last video and I was kinda hoping at that point that you know I maybe his vomiting and the <clears throat> feeling bad was you know just like a bug or something but um, I think he's I think he's like in his end stage right now 
he hasn't eaten for like two and a half days. This will be the third day that he hasn't eaten anything. Um, the two days before, the two and a half days, um, he had like maybe a cup of rice total and a lot of it got vomited up. So he's not eating and usually that's kind of the sign. So I've just been hanging out with him. And um, I just started playing guitar because I know he loves to hear the chords. And, uh, you know, I sit next to him and I pet him and I also try to give him a little bit of private time. Um, but this is the hardest thing I've ever gone through. And I kind of had a realization today that, or not today, but just through this, that... For like the last 15 years, you know, I've practiced the thought that like I'm his caretaker and, you know, um, he's safe because of me and, but with like, you know, um, him kind of making his transition, I realize like how no power that I, how I have like no power and, um, you know, be having been like his caretaker for 15 years, it's hard to uh, swallow. And then I've kind of realized that um, for the last 15 years, me thinking that I'm his caretaker was really like for my for myself. You know, he, um, he didn't need me in that way. And uh, because now, I mean, I, it's just, I just realized we're really all our own. Um, so like he's his own being and, um, you know, we never, we never own or we can't ever control, uh, anything. Um, I mean, you can control some small things or you can force them, but so anyway, I've kind of had that realization. And so I'm kind of looking at him right now and this has taken like 48 hours to come to the realization. I'm, I'm trying to see him as almost like an angel or something that came to me to help me get through certain things and um, and so I'm kind of saying like thanks and I'm trying to see it that way um, because it's scary if when I was thinking like oh my little baby you know it's like, like I can't control where he's going and um, it was kind of scary to think of it that way so I've tried to start thinking of it as me not being his caretaker but more that he's always been here maybe as my caretaker I guess um, it's freaking hard so it's just you know kind of been a, a practice like almost a meditation because I, I have to constantly be looking at this in like a, a lighter way, you know? Um, uh, so it's been like kind of a meditation to just stay focused right here with him and not think about the future and not think about the past. And um, like even this moment here, um, excuse me, <laughs> um, you know, in two days, I'm going to be looking back at this moment and kind of cherishing that, you know, he was still here. And so it's just been a real, real slap in the face or constant reminder to just freaking enjoy every moment. Enjoy every moment. Every moment that you have is precious whether you're not enjoying the moment, it, you know, it's still valuable and it's still a moment in your life. So, should we get back to guitar playing? All right, I'm gonna get back to hanging out with my my uh, baby <laughs> slash, though I'm trying not to think of it that way anymore, is my partner that's helped me 
for all this time. It's the beginning of day four of no eating. I've been kind of thinking of, as the no eating process as um, like the final end stage part of dying. And um, so day one when he first stopped eating was kind of when I was like, all right, this vomiting thing, it wasn't just a bug and you know, this might be it. And then day two, when he continued to not eat, um, I freaked out, you know, because I was like, like, no one asked me, you know, I mean, I know <laughs> no one needs to ask anybody, but um, it, it, it was just like, it was really scary. And uh, I, I could barely hold it together. And um, just complete disarray. And then day three, I had, you know, kind of come to terms that uh, this was going to be happening and, you know, it was kind of like the beginning of, you know, easing into it, I guess. Uh, also, day two, because I was so nervous, he was all nervous, he was shaking and looking at me like all scared, which made me scared and it just was like a big cycle. And uh, day three, I was like, I'm going to be strong for him. Um, and, and he was so peaceful. It was like, it was a regular day. He was walking outside and wanting to socialize, but being lethargic and still, you know, seeming contemplative and kind of reserved. And so this is the beginning of day four. If it was day two, I'd be bawling my head off. Um, and uh, every night, I I keep thinking that, you know, I'm going to wake up and he's going to have drifted off. Uh, but he hasn't, so, you know, I'm lucky for every last moment. And uh, I, I just keep assuring him that I'm going to be okay, which I am, and that he is too. Anyway... Uh, through this whole dying process, I've kind of learned a couple things, and so I just wanted to share some of those. Uh, the first one is that the dying process can take a long time. I was, you know, on day one and two, I was just waiting for him to like stop breathing or like fall over. And, um, you know, as day three came and he was kind of normal, except the no eating, um, I was like, oh, maybe this is a long process, so, um, which has actually been incredibly beneficial because it's given me time to adjust, and it's been a time that we have can, you know, share together enjoyably, given the circumstances, and uh, just kind of say goodbye and prepare you know we're each going to be on a new journey now the other thing that I've learned is that the end stage of the dying process is actually I know it's obvious it's a natural part of life you know it's not to be feared and uh, you know it's a very significant and sacred part of life 
it's just as if life is coming, you know, but this time it's going and it's coming into a new, a new life. So, um, I'm so thankful to be able to share this part of his life with him. Uh, the third thing I realized on day two, actually I realized after day two, is that they will either mimic your emotions or completely react to them. So when I was totally crazy and, you know, like, oh, don't leave and no, no, back up, I don't want this to happen, no one asked me, um, he, he was scared, he was shaking. Uh, so then day three, I made the very conscious and uh, efforted effort to uh, calm down and it was a very peaceful day for both of us and uh, fifth I've learned that uh, we all have everything we need inside us because I've been his caretaker and he's been my little baby for 15 years you know I've pre-qualified everywhere he goes, you know, everywhere he stays. If I go out of town, it's only with, like, um, trusted people. And uh, with this journey, I can't pre-qualify. I can't go ahead and look and make sure that everything's going to be set up right, that he's going to get all the love he needs. And... Uh, it's been a comfort to just realize that we all have everything we need inside us already. And so I need to see him now, like I said before, as his own individual, not my baby. And he's all fully equipped. And he's probably hanging on these last few days for me. Um, and the other thing that I wrote down is uh, the, something that I've learned about the dying process is no matter how well prepared you are it's not easy at all I've never cried so much in my life and um, it's hard to watch his body degrade and watch him kind of flounder about in his weaker body. Uh, plus, add four days onto that, where it just keeps getting worse. He doesn't seem to be in pain. Um, but uh, I, I'm uh, seeing him now as his own being that's fully equipped. And then, of course, uh, the last thing that just keeps going over in my mind, it's not directly related to the dying process, but uh, just the most important thing to do in life is love and enjoy. I can't see any other importance as I'm going through this. And I just wanted to say that uh, going back a couple to where I can't pre-qualify, I do have a faith uh, that there is some sort of life or transition. Oh my god, the sprinklers are coming on! <laughs> Let's go, Beaky! Okay, the sprinklers ran us out, but I just wanted to finish this. Uh, I said that, you know, it felt like I couldn't pre-qualify where he was going. And um, I, I want to add something on there that, you know, like I, I do believe in a, a life after death or a transition back into non-physical or source energy. So um, I definitely have that faith. I know not everybody does, but that's just mine. And um, so, so you'd think, oh, well, it's kind of already pre-qualified, right? But I just, I've never felt my faith been so tested you know and it's just because I 
I want to know everything's okay. Like, if he's going to stay at a friend's house, I can go over to the house. <laughs> I can say he needs this and this, and where's he going to go to the bathroom, and um, that sort of thing. And um, it's just a little scary from the mothering side of me that he's going where I, I can't I can't watch. So I just wanted to say that. Uh, let's see, the other thing I wanted to say was, um, oh, so with my faith being seriously tested that I didn't expect, if you're going through this or you will be going through it, something that I found really reassuring was listening to videos on YouTube from like hospice workers and people who've had near-death experiences and stuff. I would have listened to those before and been like, yeah, I believe it, but um, I just really needed the reassurance. And usually they're deli the speeches are delivered in a very loving and kind way. And sometimes you just need a little bit of that energy. So I recommend that. And then I also recommend taking care of yourself and sleeping on let's see not last night last night would have been the third night even though today's day four so on the second night it was the night after I was like freaking out I slept on the ground with him and you know he was just like he didn't know what to do it was just odd for him he's like why is she doing this and I think it was making him nervous he was changing spots and for me, I thought that was pain, but then I realized the next day as I calmed down, he was completely normal. So, uh, take care of yourself, sleep. You don't have to sleep next to them. Remember again, what, I, what I'm going back to is he's fully equipped. And, uh, you know, they probably prefer it to be just like normal, <laughs> as normal as can be. Uh, you know, they don't want like a new a new lifestyle like as they're trying to transition and uh, you know I think they just want everybody to be happy, but definitely around and uh, Normal so I finally slept in bed last night on oh, that second night. I got no sleep I was up watching him like watching for his last breath and freaking exhausting and um, scary and, and traumatic so I I uh, am happy that I've kind of thought, had the time to think about it and then was able to like have a full night of sleep last night. So anyway, though, that hopefully that helps a little bit. Okay, there's actually one more thing I want to add uh, that I've learned that's a suggestion is at this point, you know, there's so much to think about in the past and there's so much to think about in the future you know, uh, grieving for the past and then kind of even planning or logistics and just kind of envisioning a new life. But every single day that's that I've been through this, I'm sad when the tiniest segment of time has ended, like sitting outside. And um, I just want to stress the importance of staying present as much as possible and for me it's been like so hard you know it's it's in a way like a meditation I think I said that before where you're just constantly just trying to stay aware and not focus on the future you know maybe remembering the past so that you can say thank you or share share that memory um, but uh, I'm really trying to stay in the moment because I know in just hours probably I'll be wanting to go back and and cherish every single moment well we made it through day four and um, he kind of exhausted himself just walking around and I think he walks because he needs to uh, defecate, you know, and it's it's nothing. It's just kind of like a gel. But anyway, today uh, he threw up some blood and uh, just recently threw up again and now he's kind of in his like relaxed sleeping thing again and his breathing's getting a lot 
slower. Well, it's day five and uh, he's getting weaker and weaker, but he's still enjoying being outside. It's supposed to be hot today, it's supposed to be 102. So, hanging out inside in the AC and uh, I had this realization that, or, you know, I keep going in and out of like, kind of panicky thoughts, you know, like, uh, oh my gosh, I can't imagine him you know, that moment when he's gone, and and uh, I kind of had the thought come into my head when I thought that, that actually I don't need <laughs> to imagine it. So uh, everything will happen, and again, it goes back to just being in the moment, you know, and uh, you don't need to imagine anything in the future or in the past. Just uh, relish right now. So it's day six. <clears throat> And uh, he's as weak as can be. I was really surprised to wake up this morning. Actually, I, I've been waking up at night because he'll kind of shift around and then want to go out to the bathroom. And uh, last night I had a couple dreams. Uh, the first one, I was here at this place laying on the couch. And he jumped up on the couch with me. And um, I just remember enjoying it. And then... Um, and then I, I was like barely asleep and like I was like oh am I am I out on the couch and so then I kind of woke up and then I like drifted back into sleep and uh, I dreamed that we were at this tulip festival that happens in Oregon and which we've been to before uh, and there was like you know they have like vendors and booths and we came in near the front and there was a bunch of different like creatures kind of like you know like Star Wars at that cafe where they've got like all these different creatures and stuff but they were all like like beautiful creatures you know they weren't like in gear and um, <clears throat> like warriors in space you know they were like really beautiful and just kind of colorful and stuff and uh, he had a, a different leash on him than I've ever had it was like yellow and it had a bunch of like holes down it um, like purposely had holes and uh, I wasn't holding the leash and I saw him walk off and I knew that it was going to be okay and I was really happy that that he was going to go enjoy the festival and the party and I knew he was going to be safe with the other beings there and stuff so that was really nice. I think we're in the very very final time. Um, his tongue's really gray and I noticed that he stopped blinking a while ago and I, I can't tell you know some old dogs they sleep with their eyes open he used to do that um, and so I, I can't tell if he's sleeping or awake and sometimes he's just looking off in the distance and uh, even the eyes are beginning to go like one will go up and then the other one looks forward and he's just a uh, his face is really peaceful looking though. And um, his breathing is slowing down and he's just relaxing back into his bed. I'm so happy. I'm so thankful and honored to have been able to spend this, this part of life with him. You know, dying is part of life and it's a very sacred and uh, natural thing. And I'm really happy to have gone through the transformation that I have and know that he's transformed. And um, I, I just feel at peace, especially with that dream. And uh, just wishing him well and staying right by his side and petting him and telling him how much I love him and, you know, going ready. Well, I was going to end the video there, but after going through it, I really wanted to give some tips for people who might choose to let their pet die naturally. So when a dog gets older, you know, there's like the old dog phase and the senior dog phase, 
And uh, these phases all blend slowly, so you don't fully see when they happen. You know, you just kind of realize one day. So it goes from kind of like old senior dog to like geriatric dog, where it really needs a lot more more attention, uh, more food changes, more more massages, and um, just a little bit more care. And and uh, because the phases aren't always obvious, they blend together. And after that, your dog kind of goes into hospice phase. Phase. And at that point, I'm I. Th my belief is that the dog knows it before you that you know this is it so for example Andiamo's hospice phase was when he started the vomiting and um, that so then he had the vomiting that was kind of a hospice phase and then there was in my mind which I call the dying process and uh, I guess for me I was kind of seeing that is when they stop eating that's when uh, you know the that's when the owner is really gonna be noticing that you know having to come to terms and then after that is uh, you know the very last moments um, it can be you know a couple hours or even just a couple minutes uh, that is when the body is actively dying and the first part of the dying process when they're not eating and you know but you can almost still see some of the personality peaceful again this is my experience with him uh, you know it's it's really hard to imagine but once you know they get closer and closer to that actively dying phase uh, some uh, so I was like I'm prepared you know these these days have been very peaceful with him and I thought that you know he would just like close his eyes and go to sleep you know and I'm sure some dogs do again please remember this is just what I experienced uh, but a lot of what I did experience is common so um, the very end for uh, about 20 minutes and again when you're in the moment you don't know that that 20 minutes has started or whatever he uh, uh, okay let me let me start to say that even before the the final active dying stage at the very end of the the non eating dying process you know uh, before he hits that active spot his you know, of course, the body's shutting down. It's 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 a very natural thing. You know, um, he was trying to eliminate everything and would occasionally uh, vomit up some bile. And so the organs were going inside, but also I started to notice that you know visually they were going as well. The night before, I saw, I I kissed him goodnight. Um, you know, thinking maybe that's the last. I went down to kiss him and I, I saw his his eye was like really wide open and I thought, oh, that's weird. You know, and then the other eye was kind of there, you know, a little like relaxed. And and I thought, okay, that's it was just kind of scary. Then the next day when it all happened, which was day six of not eating. Um, I looked in that eye and I already saw it beginning to dry out. Uh, so, you know, know that you're going to see these changes and, and they're, they're natural. Um, and then, uh, so in, you know, in the last 20 minutes, uh, you're going to see a lot possibly. One is, you know, like the organs going outside, like the eyes, and that eye was just looking out into the distance, but the other eye was still there. So I would try to get down and, you know, let him know, and um, I was constantly, you know, uh, rubbing his arms and, you know, um, kissing him gently and talking to him. And um, in, the, in the active dying phase, 
which is really what everybody really needs to be prepared for. Um, his tongue went like gray and uh, uh, it began to hang out um, and, and uh, the, you know, there's twitching going on and um, these are all very common things by the way. And there's another common thing is convulsions. And I thought I saw the first convulsions during the active dying phase. His uh, hindquarters, we were laying there really peacefully and the hindquarters just went crazy. You know, the, the legs kind of go straight and they're just kind of kicking around. Um, but the front part's, you know, pretty peaceful. I thought that was the first convulsion, but then I remember the days before looking back. I would think that when he was laying down, you know, they lay like this kind of sideways, and he'd kick, I thought he was trying to get up. So, oh my gosh, I, I kept thinking, oh, he's just trying to like kick to get like, you know, upright so he can stand. And now I look back and I wish I was prepared. I wish I heard what I'm saying now because actually when he was kicking, I think he was having the beginning stages of the convulsions. And so I'd go over there and I'd, I'd pick him up, you know, I'd, I'd push his back up so he could get up and, and then he'd be kind of shaken so then I'd, I'd lift him up, you know, at the abdomen. Um, and then he couldn't stand, you know, his, his little feet would curl under and um, poor guy, I, I was doing that <laughs> when he wasn't wanting to get up and probably the, the least, uh, least um, pleasant time to try to get him up. Um, so the convulsions will happen and, you know, um, I thought it was just uncomfort or trying to catch, you know, his balance so he could get up. Also know that uh, when the seizures happen, it's not a, it's not a sight for the faint hearted. And I have to say that in the end, somehow, I, miraculously, I had all the courage to be completely calmly presently there. And um, I'm not a religious person, but definitely spiritual. And I've never prayed so much, just asking for like my guides and my angel or angels or whatever. And even, um, you know, some deceased family members to please be present and give me the strength to get through it. And um, it, it literally happened, you know, that I had so much strength when he needed me to be calm and um, there to nurse him with the small few things you can do. Um, you know, and then of course I was praying that, you know, angels were around him and stuff. And this is what I would recommend. Even if your dog or pet is peaceful and uh, you think you don't need any pain meds or whatever, I recommend calling a vet out anyway, and I read online that some vets will give you medications in case down the road of the next few days something happens. For example, they have meds for seizures, however, uh, personally, I think the bodies are having a seizure for a reason, you know, there's energy in there that's left by the spirit is trying to cl clean it out. So, I mean, some people don't want to see the seizures and, um, you know, that's fine. So they have meds for that if, if you, you know, would want to keep that possibly. Or maybe they're going into such violent seizures that, you know, they're hitting their heads and, you know. They also have pills, I think, for maybe nausea or something. Um, so anyway, I, it was too late by the time I realized that, oh, wouldn't that be nice to have something, at least like a pain med or even an aspirin around. Um, but at the same time, keep in mind, if it's a pill, you know, on, uh, on his last day, there was no way I could get him to eat a pill. And on the second to last day, it would have been 
torturous to try to get him to take a pill. I mean, it would have been put in the back of his mouth, holding his jaw closed, you know, and holding him up like this and trying to stroke it down. So keep that in mind. Another thing that you can actively do during the dying phase and the, and, uh, the, the active dying phase, uh, the active dying process, which is, you know, just usually minutes. Um, I think on Yamos was probably about 20 minutes. Uh, I turned on some meditation music and uh, I would hum to him and pet him and um, I just could, tried to keep talking to him like I would, like uh, whenever I'd come home, you know, I, I'd be like, oh, wow, you know, and like, you know, that sort of thing. And i um, like, oh my gosh, you're so good. You know, I, I was trying to talk like that and not let any sort of sorrow get in there. Because uh, I, I think they need people around them to be strong. During any process where they're just bedridden, but uh, particularly during the active dying phase, when really everything's, during that phase, really, he was gone. I think, I bet, I wouldn't be surprised if he was watching me take care of his body for the last several minutes. Uh, because he really wasn't there. But, um, he, he was, uh, his, I noticed that his lips were getting dry. And so when he'd breathe out, like his lip would balloon out because it was kind of stuck together. And then my mom called too. She knew what was going on and she used to be a vet tech. And uh, so actually I already started, but what she said was uh, they can grow like a fungus, you know, when the mouth gets dry. She said, make sure you're just constantly getting the mouth wet. And uh, you can even take a towel and like drip some drops in onto their tongue. And I think he was liking that because, you know, I'd hear him swallow and um, uh, as in his dying way, you know, kind of lick his lips and be like, ah, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but it, it wasn't like that, you know, it was a very little moment or a movement and awareness. So keeping the mouth, uh, they don't, it's not for their body's hydration, but just for the comfort of the mouth and breathing and, you know, their tongue doesn't get stuck to the roof of their mouth or something like that. One thing that I didn't want to deal with, and it was the night before, and, and I mean, after five days, I was, of course, as, uh, the farther along it went, I was like, it's closer and closer, even though so many times before I thought it was going to be the end. But I called my aunt the night before just to get like a break and a breather and some uh, support. And we talked and she said, make sure, because it's the, it's the weekend and it's a holiday weekend, she said, Call around and uh, see if, if uh, what you're going to do with the body. And I, I really didn't want to, but in that last day, I, you know, it's the responsible thing. You, you got to know what you're going to do with the body, because I guarantee you, you're not going to want to see it after your pet's soul has departed. So I called around and uh, for a cremation. And, you know, they were open. I think they're not in there all the time. You just call and they go over. And uh, so, so it worked out perfectly. I said before that you sleep, you know, take care of yourself. But during this whole process, I was not breathing deeply. And I had no appetite. I could barely eat two spoonfuls of cottage cheese. You know, I was just trying to get protein and calories in me. And, uh... People around me said that I wasn't even like making coherent sentences and actually I saw my videos you know when I was making the videos and I had to edit some out because I like just was completely not finishing a sentence or stuff so I was really out of it completely distracted and uh, you got to remember to just you know take bites of something and for me cottage cheese was great it's got protein and calories and fat and it's a you know you can just have a couple spoons, you know, or bananas, um, uh, and, and just try to keep down in water, just because you don't want, you don't want to miss this event. You know, it's funny because at first, for like the whole lead up to it, I thought, oh my god, it's gonna be like, 
uh, I was waiting for like the moment, you know, it was gonna be like this big moment and like angels would come down with trumpets and like uh, weird lion-headed creatures would come in with uniforms playing instruments and you know colors would be changing and you know stars would be flying and and uh, and I thought oh my god I'm, I'm so nervous you know and uh, and then I was like you know actually I bet he's just gonna stop breathing <laughs> you know I, and so so that made me feel a little better because I was like holding on it was like being on a roller coaster at the top you know when they stop and you think you're gonna go or they move a little and then they stop and you're just like you know like waiting you know it's coming and so I was feeling like that and then I was like you know what it's I'm probably going to be looking on Facebook or reading and um, he'll have taken his breath and that was it and and I I, I really wanted to be there uh, when it happened but I was okay wherever it happened um, whenever and I kind of resolved that it wasn't going to be a big deal and he would just stop breathing. And uh, I'd say uh, pet owners are lucky if that happens. Uh, not because it's rare or not, I don't, I don't know, but for, for my situation, in the last 20 minutes, he started breathing really heavily. You know, breathe heavily and then stop breathing heavily and go back to the peaceful state. And then he would breathe, and then, um, you know, he was having little convulsions in his paws, you know, they'd be like kind of going straight and then curling and going straight. Um, then there was that that big uh, convulsion where the whole legs were in the back were like, like this. And then right after that, the front leg went really straight, you know. Um, and the eye, you know, that, that, was, that was already drying up, um, it was it was going wild where the other one wasn't and uh, still even in those moments he was peaceful um, and then the breathing and that's when I noticed that the tongue went gray and was hanging out a little bit and I could hear him wanting to vomit and uh, you know he'd kind of want to sit up to like like vomit a little bit and um, he he uh, defecated, that's also a common thing. You'll want to put blankets or towels down below them. Um, he kind of let out, it wasn't almost any, it was just like a teeny bit of color and a lot of air. And it was kind of like that for most of the 20 minutes. But then at the very end, uh, and during that time I was, I was right there comforting him and singing and humming and the music playing and at the very end he sh you know he was on his side that whole time pretty much the very end he shot up and um pooped again or or you know let air out the back and uh and then he like i i I was behind him, so I put my arm like this, and then the front arm like this, you know, and his head was here. He shot up and then went stiff, and the back legs just shot out. And he was like lunging out of his body. And that's when I saw that he wasn't breathing anymore, and the legs were pushing back, and he was pushing forward, and the front legs went out. And, uh, and then I, I looked again, and he still wasn't breathing. And uh, I was watching his face too, and the eyes like went inside his head. Most amazing part was after after he was clearly transitioned. I still had my hand there, and I felt my hand get really fuzzy and really hot, and just like warm. And I looked down, and my hand was like kind of golden, you know, like a little darker, but in like a glowing golden kind of way. And um, I let it sit there for a minute because I wanted to feel that. And I don't know if that was like the soul leaving, but at that point I said, uh, swung the back door open and he said, do you want to go outside? And I stood up and walked outside <laughs> and uh, I just felt like that glowing 
being in all parts of my body. And I said, go on, baby, you know, like, let's go play, you know, go do your thing. And, um, and, uh, I knew, at least from my beliefs, beliefs, that he was there and he could still hear me talking. But for the first moment, to know that I wasn't ever going to be able to see him again. And it was hard. I could barely stand up. I was weak in the knees. And I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know how I was going to cope. But I took one step at a time. And if there's anything uh, that this has taught me, it's that you don't need to anticipate something before. When the time comes, you're going to have made the steps necessary in order to deal with it. You don't have to anticipate, worry. Things will always happen at the perfect and right time. That is one of the hugest lessons I've got from this, as well as there's nothing more important than to love and enjoy. And uh, if Andy almost ever taught me lessons, it was the strongest in this dying process. So I cherish it and uh, uh, encourage you to consider that a lot of people just euthanize. And if you are going to euthanize, after seeing what he went through, I would suggest doing it when they stop eating. And you know they're not going to eat again or what they have isn't curable. But um, it's a... Uh, you know, it might be beneficial to you, it certainly was to me, and I believe too that it might be beneficial for the soul of the pet. Anyway, uh, to kind of speed this up, I just wrote a couple things down that I wanted to, um, that, that I was kind of uh, getting in my head, and for anybody who might be going through this or, you know, went through it, or somebody you know, um, this is what are some of the thoughts that came to my head, and I'm just going to read them. You don't have to make sense of it. In fact, you're not probably going to be able to make sense of it. Just experience all the feelings. Sit with it. You can't change it, so let it come and let it go. You, you can't. You just really should accept it um, and just experience it. Remember that this is their journey, and don't forget that you have your journey. <sighs> Things change and this is one of those changes. Uh, he was here when he was supposed to be not missing from my, he's not missing from my life now. He was here when he was supposed to be and this isn't an error, you know. Uh, looking back at it all, I embrace it dearly and sacredly and know that everything was perfect. Also, don't be afraid of past memories. I, before he passed on, I was afraid to, like, remember it. But, um... Uh, those past memories will forever be shared with your companion. And reflecting back right alongside. So, when you reflect, there's still these... You know, I don't know, I'm just kind of a, maybe a dreamer, spiritualist, that there's connections and um, maybe they'll, they'll be right along remembering and loving and enjoying it with you. Um, I also found myself today kind of, you know, I would talk to him, like do like baby cooing and those little names that I would call him. And, uh, you know, part of me could have been sad, but then the other part was I can still do that and, you know, let that love grow and send it out. Uh, between my states of, of sadness and sorrow that I've felt, and I've tried to not indulge in it, because I, I do think that life goes on and um, just the relief that he's fine has been amazing, you know. Um, between those moments of sadness, when I've allowed everything to just be as it is and just sit in what is, I have experience so much love and you know what where it's coming from you know maybe it's him projecting it just being like I love you back I love you back no I'm okay um, or guides or angels or whatever doing that to me um, there there's a lot of love there so um, I'd recommend don't indulge in the sadness and just 
be if you can be in the moment even though you, you want to get out that's pretty much it I think um, by the way as as I was driving with my friend to the cremation place it was moments moments after you know um, maybe just waited 10 minutes before taking the body away and I recommend taking it away sooner in my experience that was good because with the seeing he was gone and then the body being gone soon after it was kind of it wasn't like I had to prolong the whole thing uh, but when I was driving to the cremation all I could say was I'm so glad I'm so glad I'm so excited for his journey and now when I enjoy beautiful sunsets or the peacefulness in the scene in the scenery outside nature I can call him or know that he could be with me and enjoy that as deeply intimately and profoundly and uh, I just feel connected and, and loved, you know. Anyway, I thank you for um, the going on that journey with me for the parts that you did just experience or witness. And uh, please stay tuned for the video uh, that's going to come uh, that was that's more of a celebration of his life, you know, um, seeing him in, uh, in his full life and uh, abundance. Because um, that's, that's how he should be remembered. So please stay tuned for that. Thank you so much.